So I, um, Steve Short, I arrived at uh, Brimbrook straight out of Holton um, on engines, propulsion systems um, in September 1984. I spent three and a half years in ASF um, and had the pleasure of working with these two gentlemen, uh, Andy Murphy and Mario Saramenta, who taught me a lot. Um, I remember I left Holton, I had a, an old French, an, an old um, Triumph Dolomite at the time, and I dropped a mate off at, uh, um, at Con- Coningsby, and I dropped a mate off at Scampton, and I made the lonely journey um, up to uh, up to Bimbrook. And I remember stopping at the top of the hill and sort of looking out and taking in the camp, which was quite a sight, um, you know, for a youngster that had grown, spent most of his life in, the, in East Sussex. I arrived on the station, I went to get something from my car, I parked outside a Garbrun, checked in, I had to, some papers to, uh, to show, I, I can't remember exactly, but I remember hearing two things. One was the starter of a lightning going off and it sounded like an industrial strength um, <laughs> fire extinguisher and I thought there was a massive fire already on, on the pan. Um, and then the next thing was a lightning just taking down the runway. I mean, the timing of it was absolutely perfect, uh, and it took off on quite a steep climb, um, um, and was accelerating in that climb. It was a clear, sunny day. Almost, it must be what now? 37 years to the date. We're in August uh, 2021, so uh, September 1984. Um, but its ability to have climbed. And pretty much disappeared out. You could still hear it, but it had gone out the sight of the mm. eye in mm. a very short period of time. That, to me, as a as a youngster, as a teenager, was a, was a phenomenal sight. Mm. And I spent, I think, about two weeks on Swo's working party, mm. staying in the guard room as well with a couple of other lads. Andy Gardner was one of those. Andy Gardner. Yeah. Ooh. And then uh, and then I uh, I took my due place, sharing a room in Alcatraz, uh, and uh, signed into ASF. And started working with you fellas. So, uh, mm. yeah. Mario, what about yours? So, um, I, I arrived at uh, Bimbrook 1st of October 1980, and I remember turning up the guard room saying, Hello, this is LAC Saramenta, uh, just reporting for duty. And the duty sergeant or corporal said, Come in here, we've just started a tacky well. And that was my introduction to Bimbrook. So, we had a three day exercise, and I just wondered what the hell was going on. It was. Mm. Planes flying over, air raid warnings, air raid warning black, you know. Uh, and, uh, the exercise finished. I thought, well, okay, I'm going to find my feet now. But no, they had the Swole's working party. And I was in transit in there uh, for the Swole's working party. I did, I think I did about three weeks, actually, on the Swole's working party. So moving urea, which is uh, commonly called uh, pig's urine. <laughs> uh, it was used for snow clearing, de-icing, the runways and so on. Uh, and then I moved, I didn't actually move into Alcatraz straight away, I moved into the Nissen huts, which uh, were rem- remnants from World War II, I believe. Uh, they were in appalling condition, uh, but then I quickly moved into Alcatraz. I did a couple of years in Alcatraz, moved into the Block 4 accommodation where I stayed, uh, and I left Binbrook in October the 10th, 1986. So I did a full six years, all, all in ASF, with stints on the guard duty, uh, on five squadron doing OTRs, which was operational turnarounds, which was quite exciting. I used to really enjoy doing that. Um, Bimbrook itself was, for me, it was a quite special place, um, even more so when I look back on it now, because it was almost pretty much an exclusive club. It was, It felt like that. Exclusive might not be the right word, but it was the last home of the Lightning, and we felt, I, I felt there was an atmosphere there where it was us against the modern RAF, and there was very much a, 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 I find it difficult to put the word. Um, Almost right. spiritual. It, in a way. it, it was, yeah. it was yeah. like, uh, you know, we we're all a, a, club. a, a club. Yeah. Uh, Thursday night at the Bimbrook Bop, some were iffy, but some were brilliant. Uh, <laughs> the rugby club, oh, it was plenty mainly of, centered around alcohol. Oh, yeah. mainly centered around yeah. alcohol, and um, yeah, 
very very formative years uh, mm. and I've never really uh, forgotten them mm. and you know my I think my wife's fed up with me mentioning Binbrook <laughs> but it was a very special place to me yeah. yeah and I think I think when I mean spiritual it's more about you know it feels like the spiritual Whiskey. home of the Whiskey. of the light oh, right, yeah. no, no, right, right, but it sure. had a you know it stirred I think both Binbrook and the lightning together you know yeah it, it, it it stirred the soul. I, I, I do remember um, when I first arrived in ASF, I got taken into the hangar <clears throat> and I saw the, I, I knew the Lightning was a fighter aircraft, I knew it was fast, I didn't appreciate the size of it and I was 17 and I looked at these things on jacks and I went, my God, they're massive, they're huge, I could not believe the mm. size of them. Mm. And though everyone in trade training said, oh my word, you're going on the, on the frightening, oh, you'll never cope. And, and yet we did and we come out the other side smiling with yeah. lots of great memories mm -hmm. and Murph apart from the um, previous experience that you've just kindly enlightened and yeah. us on um, <laughs> what, what were your initial yeah. thoughts upon a upon arrival yeah. so I got here a couple of months after Mario um, December mid, middle of December 80 um, first thoughts even before I got to the the gate was driving through these huge snow no drifts in the walls. It always used to snow, didn't Unbelievable it? Unbelievable deep snow. So eventually got here. I didn't have to do any time on the Swoes working party, thankfully. I don't know why, some kind of blessing. Um, almost straight into Alcatraz. But the thing that stuck in my mind, I think, which uh, dumbfounding and awestruck, was again like Mario, you, you walk into that hangar first day without a clue what on earth you're doing and not only the size of the things but the level of activity yeah, and the noise, noise. Oh. And swarming the fumes. <laughs> swarming with people yeah undercarriages going up and down and it just sinks i just thought what is i don't move in yeah. case something hits me yeah you know it was just but you soon got into the rhythm you soon yeah become used to that and, yeah. and um you and when and then you notice when somebody new comes along you can see how you know they're absolutely awestruck as well you know to get from one wing to the other um hopping over the jury strip yeah the new people would climb underneath because it yeah. felt a bit safe of it you know yeah <laughs> bombing around the place um so that was for me going into the hangar and so uh, and and then i left um it was May or June, I can't really remember, May or June of 88, so... So the yeah. camp had wound up then? Yeah, I did a couple of years in Alcatraz, but then I moved, uh, I bought, bought, my, bought my own place and, uh, and, you know, didn't spend as much time on the, on, on, on the base as these guys, but did, you know, did, did attend numerous parties and bops and... So, so yeah. you're, I guess between us then, we had, so six, you had eight years, eight and a half mm, years on, mm. on here at Pembroke? Yeah. Plus your six, mm. Mario, and my three and a half. So we 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 were just a small part of the cog, though, weren't we? Yeah. Uh, the Best part of twenty years. Yeah, yeah. Us, I guess. But you know, you know one thing, I, I uh, when when we visited Hangar Three, the old ASF hangar, uh, the, the place I wanted to see was the old tea room, the crew room. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> you went from a the inside the hangar where there was noise, diesel fumes, petrol fumes, you name it, it was horrible into the tea room and the only thing in the tea room you could see was smog yes. from the cigarettes yes. that everyone used to smoke yeah. and there was the bun fight to get to the table so you could have a game of bridge Yes. and yeah. I remember in a 20 minute tea break I used to go between three and four cigarettes mm. and I'm still on them now. Yeah. There you go. There you go. And then lunchtime was an hour. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my word. You used to have to stagger the breaks didn't we? Yeah. That, there were that many people working in the hangar. Yeah. And Every now and again, you'd have a week on keys and tees. Tees, key, yeah. Tees, tees, tees and, and keys, keys yeah. yeah. And I, I remember, you know, mopping that floor about six or seven times a day and yeah. getting all the mugs washed by hand. Yeah. I, I worked it out that in a day, I washed about eight hundred cups. Yeah. Up. <laughs> Actually, do you know what? On on that that tea bar was kind of, you know, it was not tea bar duty was not for the faint-hearted. No. Because the stick and the banter. Yeah, oh yeah. And you know, can I put that on tick? I yeah, wanna, I want to. I want to. Uh, you know, I want a Kit Kat. Yeah, on cup tick. Of coffee. Yeah, and on that on tick. Yeah. And, and snake and snake and pick If you were a, <laughs> an NAC or something, and they had a corporal asking mm. you that, that was always tricky. So that was. Tough. Well, there was there were benefits for, on the T bar, weren't it? Because oh, you, there were. You, you, yeah, yeah. Not not yeah, not many, but the odd pie. 
the odd, odd Kit Kat, Kat benefit. Yeah. 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 The odd free <laughs> cup of tea benefit. Yeah. 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 Can of Coke. Did, did come with benefits. Yeah. Yeah. It was busy. Well, that was it. It was busy. Yeah. It was it was busy. busy. Yeah. But that, tea, that crew room was, uh, it was incredible. I, the, the haze of smoke. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you asked me earlier whether I'd ever smoked, and I said no. But you had. I'd probably. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'd probably yeah. Be, at least I've had a filter in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, happy days.